All right, I'll call to order this August 28, 2018 meeting of the Powhatan County School Board. Uh, the Madam Clerk, if you'll permit the minister to reflect that all members of the school board are present this evening along with Dr. Jones will be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Ms. Ayers and in the invocation by Mr. Cole. If you'll please stand, the flag is located to our right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We remain standing for the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunities and the possibilities which await us as we begin a new year. We ask for your blessings and guidance upon our parents, upon our community, and especially among our teaching and staff. We ask and hope that it will be a good year for all involved. And as we close this prayer, we'll observe a minute among the silence for Jim Ringer, a former school board member here at Goddard County Board Schools. change or revision to the draft agenda presented for the meeting this evening. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to approve the agenda. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor of approving the draft agenda, please respond with aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Brings us to our public comment period of the evening. Now, this is an opportunity for delegations or individuals requesting to uh, address the board to be heard. It's three minutes per individual, five minutes per group, and there's a 30-minute total time limit. If the floor is open, we would ask, the board would ask, that uh, speakers address their comments to the board as a whole. And please identify yourself by name. At this point, we'd ask if you do wish to speak, please come to the center of the room here. Public comment period is open. Once again, public comment period is open. All right, so you know, moving on, I'll bring the public comment period to a close. Dr. Jones, I believe you have some presentations for us this evening. I do. Uh, the first um, presentation is on elementary realignment um, to kind of wrap up uh, the process that we went through last year and to report back to the board uh, the results that we have. Um, I'm going to go through the first part of the um, presentation. Uh, Dr. Thomas got detained, uh, but be here shortly. But we can go ahead and get started. I'll lead us through this, and then um, Ms. Gwaltney is here to talk about transportation ramifications. Um, as the, the board is aware, we uh, began a process where we redrew some lines uh, because of capacity issues, particularly here at Flat Rock and at Powhatan Elementary School. We had a large committee that, um, of community members that worked through that process. And one of the things that the board um, changed and updated were some policies related to variances um, and so this is kind of the information that we have about where we ended up with variances. Um, the types of variances we have are employee requests which we um, always handle if a teacher is teaching at a school we allow those uh, their children to go to that school. Uh, relocation requests, people moving from one part of the county to another um, and then there were parent requests that were primarily because of um, before or after school care. And then there were a couple documented hardship cases. So um, the numbers are on the right side of this slide. They fall within what we were anticipating. Uh, we have 15 students asked for variances at Flat Rock. Ten of those are fifth graders, so those are one year only variances. At Pocahontas it was five students, uh, one fifth grader. And at Powhatan Elementary School, 28 students and seven fifth graders. Uh, if the board remembers the uh, little feedback that we got with unhappiness with the lines was mainly centered in that Powhatan community, so it didn't surprise us that more um, parents uh, took advantage of um, the variance process related to daycare for uh, that school. We did have four um, medical um, requests that we honored um, and one other um, documented hardship that we honored. So, and that's included within those variance numbers. So that's where we ended up with the variance process. Um, in terms of capacity, which is the next slide, 
Uh, we're real pleased with where we currently stand. The goal of the committee kind of that set forth was to have everybody at 85 percent or lower uh, so that we could maximize kind of the capacity at our existing elementary schools and um, be able to put off um, requesting a, a fourth elementary school while we still had capacity, particularly at Pocahontas. So right now, um, in last year, the capacity numbers are there in blue. Uh, you know, we were 94% at um, Powhatan Elementary, 90% at Flat Rock. Anytime you get over 90%, 92%, you're reaching something that can be critical. Uh, you have a little more leeway in elementary schools than you do secondary schools. But you can see Pocahontas with the sixth grade leaving uh, with the opening of Powhatan Middle School. Passive is at 67%. So we shifted students, and right now our current enrollment, this is anticipated based on the numbers we have, it could change slightly as students uh, continue to enroll this week in the first couple of weeks of school, but also as students are taken off the rolls uh, once they don't show back up to school for various reasons. We're at 82% at Flat Rock, 85% at Pocahontas, and 85% at Powhatan Elementary, uh, which is exactly where we wanted to kind of be to balance out the school. So, we're real pleased with how this ended uh, ended up. Um, we got um, the community seemed to respond well to the um, new policy on variances and providing some more flexibility there for students um, that had daycare issues. So I, I think that it really worked out well. Class sizes at the three elementary schools are um, are good, and we continue to um, monitor that. Uh, we just added a teacher. As the board knows, to Pocahontas Elementary um, last week or moved one from here to um, Pocahontas uh, because of class sizes and monitoring that. But right now we look really good in terms of where we are with class sizes to each of those schools and we'll be giving that information to the board um, as um, the first week of school as students show up and we'll start monitoring that number ahead of our uh, September 30th count. Yes? Uh, the new capacities, are those Factoring in the variances or just based on the district plan? The what says anticipated? Yeah, the those are actually the students that are enrolled, including the variances. So the variances are in, yep. in, 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 in. Yep. And do the variances include the teachers' children that are also granted to go to those? No, schools? those do we did not include that. Those are okay. just variances related to the variance policy. Okay. All right, so let's go back to the slide that's labeled variance process. Mm -hmm. So this, the parent request variance is granted, which is on the right side of that slide. That does not include the teachers. Right. That does not include the teachers because that's a process we've always used before. We wanted to show what the new um, variance is related to the new policy. Okay. Do you know how many students that is by chance of those students? Uh, the employees, mm -hmm. I, I don't, but we can get that information to you. I think it was on one of the it slides, was. yeah, that yeah. we reviewed last November. Yeah. I agree with you. We've seen it before. Yes. Yeah. But we can get the updated numbers because we have moved staff and um, okay. we've hired new staff that may be bringing their yeah, children I think, with them. I, I apologize, I didn't mean to no. interrupt you. I was just going to say that I think for informational purposes, that would be that would be good to know. I'd yep. like to know how many in addition to the variances, how many uh, staff students we have as well. Yep. And this will be the last year that the fifth grade is applicable. A one and that year. was a one year yep. waiver mm -hmm. for the ones that were correct. Okay. Moving up. Right. That's cool. Okay. Yep. And the rest of them do have to be approved every year. Every year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, please proceed. I'm going to ask Ms. Waltney to um, give us an update on uh, transportation related to this realignment. Good afternoon, Dr. Jim, board members. Um, so as we looked at the realignment and we began the routing process, we actually began the routing process back in June. We work very closely with TransFinder, which is the software company that we run our software through that speaks to PowerSchool. Um, we did some additional training with TransFinder and we worked um, with their help desk and online, they took control of our of our computers to uh, help us with the with the rollover as well as now the new realignment boundaries. Um, they did us a special favor in that they kind of showed the map on our on our visual map. They showed the new overlay boundaries, which we don't typically see when we're routing. 
we just see the whole map of Pontiac, but they overlaid that for us as a consideration because we were we were dealing with new boundaries and we could have students showing up and we certainly didn't want about them in the wrong district. Um, and because it was new for all of us, we hired an additional a second dispatcher who has worked this summer along with the dispatcher, myself, and Brian Bartlett to um, to go through the routing process for all the children, including the realignment, those that are affected by the realignment. As we went through the routing this summer, we spoke with at least 22 drivers, and we continue to speak with drivers as they come in and kind of give us feedback on the routes as they look at them. They trial ran them last week, Friday. So we're already beginning that process of thinking. We know kind of what we need to watch for and what what potential changes or tweaks may have to occur. Um, we had three routes that moved, uh, next slide. We had three routes that moved from uh, Pocahontas Elementary to, from Powhatan Elementary to Pocahontas Elementary, sorry. They were routes 35, 49, and 49. We had one route that moved from Flat Rock to Pocahontas and one route that moved from Flat Rock to Powhatan Elementary. And so, um, again, Route Finder helped us with moving those routes, and it wasn't, um, it was much easier than we thought it was going to be, and it was much smoother than, much smoother move than we thought it was going to be to move those routes. Um, as I said, the drivers came in the 24th, and they received their routes for the new year, and they trial ran those routes on Friday. As we've looked at the routes since we've routed and they're printed and, and we've taken a look at them, we've got about 21 routes that are projected to increase in time. That could be from a minute to 12 minutes. Um, and we have about 15 that are projected to decrease in time. I can't say that that's a direct result of the realignment because that the realignment is only one variable that's in there. You've got different children, people moving, just a lot of different variables. So those increases and decreases may or may not be directly related to the realignment. We are watching, um, obviously we're watching a couple spots that, that we're a little concerned, look a little longer than we want them to look. But we, what I tell parents when they call is we have to remember that when we route buses, we route with the assumption that every child is going to ride that bus. And so we know that that's not the case. And so the, the times decrease substantially because not every child is riding every single bus. So it's, it's a projection at best. And so it's not a, a true time projection. It, it's, it's a snapshot of any given day that we print the routes. This is what the routes will look like. Uh, but we are looking at, at three routes specifically, um, two of them at Palatine, that, that kind of where things shifted a little bit in the, in the boundaries. And we'll continue to monitor those over the first several weeks of school and make adjustments if those routes are longer than, than they should be. All right, Ms. Baldwin, let me ask a question. Yes. So I, the, the board, we, we talked about it several times in terms of consideration about whether to, to move down this path. Mm -hmm. yes, Can you be a little more specific with us about the length of some of these routes, you think, in terms of time? Um, well, look at, if I can back, yes, sir. Um, when I look at route, when we look at routes at the beginning of the year, we have some that look like they're going to be an hour and 20 minutes long. And this was the case last year as well. That that doesn't end up happening on the first day, again, because not every child rides the bus. So the longest route I'm looking at is about an hour and 30 minutes. But again, um, when I look at what that route was last year, what she ran in it, what the route was running in about 30 minutes, um, I've added a little, a, some students to that route, about 20 minutes worth, so that would be 50 minutes, um, if that makes sense to you, not an hour and 30 minutes as is projected. I have to look at what it looked like last year, what, it, what we added to it, and I can guesstimate what it will look like this year, um, but I'd certainly want to watch it. So the difference is actually in whether the students are choosing to use the bus as yes, a means of transportation. That's part of it, yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is. And then there's also some line. buffer built in of how long it takes at each stop yes. in the system. That so it's always it's estimating always on the high side. We put the average speed for the route at 30 miles per hour. That's not the case. We know they go faster than 30 miles per hour on Route 60. They can go 45 miles an hour. So there are some there's some buffers built in there that are that are just going to um, 
bring it more in line with reality. So. Okay. Any questions from anyone? I, I'll, I'll just say that I, I, mean, I, I have some concerns about the length of the ride for the students. And an hour and 30 minutes sounds no. if it's an really hour and 30 long. Minutes, we, have, we have backup plans in okay. place to split bus routes. Uh, an hour is always our goal. Uh, no um, more right. than an hour. Um, now, we've talked about some of those routes that are at the far western end of the county that go yeah. to the far eastern end of the county, to the high school. They're, geographically, I don't know there's any way we can get that under an hour. And, and, uh, but well, certainly an hour is, our, is a top end. So. Yes, ma'am. And, and I know I know that at least particularly what I recall is we had discussion about the impact of the realignment on the northern part of our county up in the extension of Pocahontas Elementary and then the in the southern, southern southwestern corner of the county. Southwest, I'm not seeing it there either. Where I'm seeing it is this, the eastern, the flat rock that has moved to Powhatan. Okay. That's where I'm seeing the, the area that I'm watching. Okay. And that wasn't something that any of us really thought about or, looked, or were concerned about initially. Um, and, I, and I think if it ends up being just too many children, then we'll split the route and we'll bring the times down where they need to be. But Mr. Conker, do you have questions? When you're, when you're yes, I'm going to it. What What's the process as, as these times are kind of honed in uh, to know that when the buses should leave? Because I think there were a lot of cases, uh, I'm trying to know if it was this past year, specifically at this school, where buses were arriving 20, 30 minutes ahead and the kids had to sit on the bus because they couldn't get into the school. So it may have been, may have been a year, <coughs> but uh, how, how does that get resolved? If you have an estimate that's an hour and 10, that gives you a start time, then if the route ends up being 35 minutes, you ought to be, you got to adjust that start time. When, if I hear about a bus that's getting to the school that much too early, then I'm going to speak to the driver. And it's, it could be that one day thing. Um, it's hard to just give you a blanket answer, but I'll, in the case of a special needs driver, for example, if you have one child that doesn't ride, it's going to throw the whole route off. Um, and that driver's going to do their best, but they may get to school 15, 20 minutes earlier because there was a child that didn't ride. In, in the case of a regular bus, um, if that driver is getting there 15 minutes, so let's talk about this and let's back up your, back up your, or push your time forward so the kids don't get on the bus quite as early. You know, um, again, it's a case of a few students that aren't riding and it's a one-day thing, okay. But let's, let's adjust that so that you're not getting there so early because you don't want to get I, 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 I only know about it because I was dropping off here and uh -huh. the teacher yes, schedule yes. and there were buses pulling in that were way early. Uh, you know, just 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 wondering how that how it gets resolved. And most good country if I may, we have uh, watched that over the last, you know, three or four years and we met with principals so that they will also when we ask them that you let us know if we have buses that are getting uh, there really early like that. Uh, because none of us want that. I mean, you have the kids sitting there and they're starting their day off back. So we approach those drivers individually to deal with uh, making the adjustments in the route so that we don't have it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Hunter, did you have another question? Dr. Jones, did you want to make a comment? No, Mr. Jones covered it. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. Jones, did you have another question? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I also have some concerns about the length of the extra time. I've already gotten calls. It's already posted on the website, and which is wonderful. But what the big problem is already, and is, is it's not a good PR for us, because the times that are there are, um, for instance, one said 5.26 a.m. That was an initial, that was an initial posting that was an error, ma'am. And we okay. pulled it down well, and we fixed it. Okay, well, as of last night, it was still there. Okay, so what, I, what I'm getting at is we need to proofread all this stuff before we put it out because that's what the public is seeing first, is, is that. And we know that's ridiculous just as they do. And so that's the kind of thing I'd like to see fixed. Um, and I also don't think it's right for the western part of the county to always be on the bus for an hour. Uh, last year, I know in particular, well, it's been several years, I've already talked to Dr. Jones about this, the same people have to be on the bus for over an hour. Last year, they were ending up picking up somebody off of Academy Road before they went out 
or on the way back or whatever. So let's, let's see if we can't just have one bus go out to the western area and bring all those people in and leave somebody up here on, in town to take care of us. <coughs> because people are not happy. They are not happy with the length of the bus rides. And I, I saw one at a Pocahontas that said pickup was at 728. Now that's just about an hour. Um, hopefully, like you said, it'll be under an hour. But then uh, the return time was 450. So that's like an hour and 25 minutes. They pull out about 350 to 450. It's about the end. Well, now we're, 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 I thought we were ending school at 325. Three, uh, Dr. Jones. Yeah. Um, school gets out at 325, 335. Well, the website says 325 okay, on two of our schools, and one of our schools, it doesn't have the times. Okay. So we need to kind of fix that. Yep. But, you know, I just get many, many complaints about this, and I would like to see some positive. Maybe also all the things you just told us. Can we not put that in with the, with the, um, the routes to say? This is, you know, da 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 you know, like you just told us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it doesn't have to be a lengthy, mm -hmm. you know, but just to, so they can hear some of that stuff. But also, we just need, why, why can't, you know, if the same time is going on, on the bus driver sheets, why are they not coming to you and say, hey, um, Mrs. Gwaltley, mine says 526. Is, do, do the two softwares not work together with your print out and your, what you posted and what you do for your routes? Does yes, that yes. The, and we posted the 20th and 21st and then we began, and then we began looking back through for errors. We did proofread it before we posted it, but there were some errors that we didn't catch and we had a glitch in the program. Okay, well I would be happy to sit down and show you what I found and what people have told me and so we can move on. It's just, we work, you work so hard in this county to do good things and positive things. You know, I, I just want to eliminate as much negativity as we can ahead of time. I know the first day is crazy, you know, it is. You do the best you can, but there are some things I think we could still do. Thank you. Dr. Jones, do you have any other comments for the moving forward? No, sir. Ms. I just have one Ms. question just to, to the, when you reference realignment rollover, those are the variances that we granted. And even though they're not, they're supposed to have parental transportation, they're having parental transportation to their daycare providers. No, that's not, uh, the realignment rollover is just the students who've removed from schools because the lines were redrawn. At the end of the year, we have to roll over our database. And that's done in late July, which is when we can start running the rolls, running the routes. It's all the students who are redistricted. Okay. So we have the realignment, then we have the students that roll over because they're rolling up a grade and they're changing the buildings. I see. I see six, what you're saying. Uh, fifth graders okay. are becoming sixth graders and eighth okay. graders are becoming ninth graders. Okay. That's and what I did. I wasn't sure what pool. Kindergarten or sixth graders. It's okay. It's just that's for that. That's why I asked. Okay. 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 That's why. That's why I asked about that. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Sarah. I have one more question. I just wanted to make sure that I understood something you said a minute ago. Yes. So our, our effort or our intention is to try to limit the time that a student spends on the bus to less than an hour. Yes, sir. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. How do we generally do? Last year, for example, how, how did we do? How many routes exceeded an hour? The only route that exceeded an hour that I'm aware of was uh, about 10 from Hunting High School. And that's coming from the far western part of the far eastern, far western part of the western. Right. So we have a centrally located high school. We know that we're going to have some long routes out of that area, and the eastern side as well. I would imagine. And as we Mr. run John. these routes at the beginning of the year and drivers figure out what students are running, they will notify the students and the parent that these times are, are adjusting and. Um, we do plan this year to update the routes um, uh, after a few weeks so that what's posted is more accurate than 
what the program generates based Wonder, on what that's students. also been a complaint I've heard. A great idea. Good. Wonderful. And, I, and we'll and we'll put some language. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> we'll put some language on the with the bus routes and Ms. Emil's suggestion. I think it's a good one that these routes uh, will be adjusted and um, that the times uh, may be flexible based on actually running the routes. And this is our best estimate that we have at this time. Mm -hmm. So we'll put that information on there. And, and I think it's worth saying that our bus drivers generally do a really nice job. Mm -hmm. I know that in the past, the bus driver that transported my youngest son, she would call us almost every day and give us a time for the morning, particularly early in the day, or early in the school year, rather, as it changed a lot. So there was a lot of communication with the parents. So that communication is really positive. And, and as Dr. Jones has indicated, based on Ms. Emil's comments, I think as much information as we share with the parents is critical. But, Mr. Cumpkin. Yeah, I guess yes, sir. I'm sorry, I'm thinking of another one. Yes, sir. Go ahead. back to the variances. <coughs> we have kids that are attending, uh, you know, one, of the, one of the ones that's attending school that they were not initially supposed to. Where are they getting picked up and dropped off? Uh, so, I mean, so are we allowed to pick up and drop off kids at non custodial? Residences just that's based on the parents' word. Dr. Well, I understand a daycare. That's a, that's a licensed business, but I'm just talking about you know non-family member homes. Yes. This is not, not our if concern that's, legally if, or anything. Well, so the parents have given it to us as the drop-off place, whether it's a private daycare or a family member who may be keeping the child. We have lots of grandparents that watch children that And I don't have a problem with home. another family member. It's right. just I don't think that everybody's going to be a family member that may be, may be putting these kids out or, or getting them at the end of the day. It's the parents' responsibility to give us an address of where they're going to be after school. Um, and in most cases, their businesses. You know, we have martial arts world and lots of different places, church daycares that are dropped off, and some of them are private mm -hmm. homes that that run daycares out of the home. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, if I'm Ms. Might. Cole, yes, um, I'm a little bothered that we address these things as problems when they haven't occurred yet. There may be concerns, and, and certainly all of us have concerns at the end of the year. And, and you know, I'm very appreciative of the efforts that our staff goes through to try to get this right, but I also know that there are variables that we can't control at this point. Uh, and we don't know. We, you know we, we base it on the best information we have. We don't have all the information at this point. And I hope parents understand that this is a collaborative effort. It's not entirely the school system's responsibility to make sure kids get to school. The parents have to help us with this. And if they've got information that they think would help us do it better, then we're certainly welcome to, you know, certainly welcome that. They can communicate it through the principal would be where I would start. Uh, that's, you know, that's a normal place of contact. Um, and so, but the other thing is, if we are as a board are truly concerned about hour-long routes, then we as a board have to find some money to come up with some extra buses, some extra drivers to make that happen. I think it's unfair for us to sit here and, and, and hammer on our staff about it unless we're going to do something about it on their end. So we want our staff to do the best they can and, 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 I'm, and I'm thinking that, you know, I'm hoping that that's what they're doing. I believe that's what they're doing. But I, I just ask us to be a little more, you know, make sure we understand their responsibility in this too. Uh, so that's just my comment. I, you know, I understand parents' concerns. I had those concerns when I was a parent about whether my child was going to get to school at the time and whether they were picked up or not. And I, I put my grandchildren on the bus and, pick up, and take them off the bus. So I understand the concern when the bus isn't there on time. But at the same time, it is a collaborative effort. And, and we can always improve in communication, and I think they're always all good suggestions. But you know, I do encourage us as board members when somebody calls us, if they've got a concern, that they address that concern directly with the principal or with Ms. Thank you. All right. Questions, other comments? Ms. Um, I'd like to say that um, no one is hammering. I am not hammering anybody. I, since I've been elected in my district, I, this has been a problem. Parents have called me and said this is a problem. Okay? So I would like to see it addressed. And when I talked to Dr. Jones last year, and that's what he said, is there were changes being made. And so that I was delighted to see that. And I hope that this will work out. But if it does not, yes, you're right. We as a board, I do think, need to put more money aside, especially for the students in the western part of the county. 
It is not fair for them to continually have to ride for over an hour. That was what I'm trying to do. I, like I said, I got calls last night. I thought, well, you know what? We're going to discuss it today, and, and we'll see what, it, what happens. But yes, we always do get calls. I always, uh, they say, that's why you put in another phone number or phone line, because for years, people couldn't get in. And they would be calling. I don't know if they've been calling you, but they've been calling me. So we got another phone line. Now we've got another dispatcher. We're growing. These are all things that we need to look at. And if it does require, and I hope you will say that, Transportation Department, if it does require another bus or bus drivers, I hope you will say that to us so that we can fix this. Thank you. Yes, that's Mr. Okay. Uh, yes, sir, on a positive note towards some of the comments, this board has supported, and in this budget year, we have increased driver pay, increased <laughs> substitute driver pay. Ms. Faulkner does have uh, five or six. Uh, six in the, in the training process that, right that now. We hope um, we'll complete in September. And uh, what we do today compared to what we did a few years ago is when those drivers do complete their training, we try and put them to work doing something, even if we don't have a route for them. In years past, we would hope they just hung around until we had a route for them. And we lose them when we do that after we train them. Uh, the squad and some of our staff have gotten trained to conduct the uh, DMV test, and that took a month off of the time it takes for us to train and get a driver license and ready to use. That's been an improvement. Um, the board did approve for us to hire another dispatcher this year, and that's really going to help, particularly during the first three weeks of school when we get, you know, hundreds or who you knows, it's a lot of calls, uh, because we'll have some more, another person that can answer those. We now have uh, active GPS on all of our buses, and we have added that program to the two dispatchers' uh, desktops, Ms. Waltney's, Brian Bartlett's, uh, Susan D'Esposito, and uh, the administrative assistant for the transportation. So all of those individuals can answer a phone, and one of the uh, Biggest questions is, where's my student's bus? Any of them can look on that active GPS and answer that question. So uh, we are doing things to try and improve the services and you know, help the uh, parents. And those things cost money. And the board's you know, supported uh, us doing that. So uh, uh, you know, the staff is strong, as you all know. And you've said that. So, thank thank you, Mr. Johnson. I know, Mr. Kunke, you have a question. Let me just say, I think I began this discussion by asking you that question, and I will tell you that I did that because as a significant part of our discussion, as I recall, was that issue about extending the northern part of our Pocahontas Elementary School District. Mm -hmm. And I remember the discussion about what was the impact of that going to be on our bus routes. And I, I think uh, one thing that I've learned is if you don't have a goal, you know you're never going to reach it. The goal is that, that, at least for me, is that I, I would like to see students on the buses for an hour or less. I think beyond an hour becomes an unreasonable amount of travel time. But I don't think we, I agree with your comments, we don't know what that really looks like until we start to run these routes. But you're, you're our source of information for quite a bit of this. So for me, I, I want to know where we stand today. So that, that's the reason that I would ask you the questions that I do. Um, and I appreciate the information. So, Mr. Conklin? I guess. I'm just trying to, uh, I'm trying to be sympathetic with this email because if, if the software would allow you to look at, let's say, the average ride per student and look at that in, in various areas of the county, if you can do that, what I would expect that you'd see is in, in my district, say, the kids might average 20 minutes, and in the Seamalls district, the average distance or the average time might be. 40 or 50 minutes. I mean, that sounds like a problem, but when all of our schools are in the eastern half of the county, I don't think you could make it equal. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to be as accommodating as I can, but I, I just don't see how the demographics are going to work in your favor when you know, it, it just takes longer to get from the far western end of the county to where the schools are. So, you know, I, I hope and I understand that you're doing what you can, but. Um, I think there's some limitations that we, we just have based on where everything is that uh, some kids are going to have a short ride and some are not. So, uh, 
thank you for your sorry, efforts in making it making it work the best you can. All right, we'll see. It is it is that one bus, particularly in the western end, that they were adding locally uh, at Academy Road or somewhere in this area and before so they go pick up the 4 6 30 um, out west and then they would have to stop and do some in town and then on the way back home they would drop those students off first and then go way back there I think if you had a bus driver who lived out in the western end or even from the bus uh, depot and started their route and did it and went directly from there to the school, we wouldn't have uh, an hour. And most of them, like, well, I'll just say my son's, I checked his, and right now it's an hour and 20 minutes. And, you know, that's way too long. I, I could drive them there in 25 minutes, and maybe another thing we, we need to do is look at the bus stop being at Central Parks, you know, um, for people out west. I have had some parents tell me that that's what they've done. They have put their child on someone else's driveway because they get picked up earlier. And so, well, do you do what I think, you got to do? Mr. Chairman, I think we've got a clear idea of what the goal is, and we're uh, very hopeful, and we'll do everything we can to meet that goal. And um, I'm very um, optimistic that we're going to be able to do that this year. So um, we appreciate the board's feedback and suggestions. We'll certainly take those into account. Um, I think some of the suggestions that have been made in the past have helped us in terms of the drivers reviewing the routes. And we got the routes up uh, over a week earlier than we've done them previously. Now maybe we rushed and there were some mistakes as a result of that, but we wanted to get them out to the families as soon as we could. So. We, we're hopeful that we're going to be able to, to make that goal and we'll do everything we can to do it. And if it requires additional funding or um, additional resources, then we'll bring that information to the board at the appropriate time. All right. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Ms. Gold. Are you, are, have you concluded your presentation? Would you like, would you like to continue? One more slide. All right. uh, we thought we were ready to post the 16th August, and BDOT informed us that the bridge on Rocky Ford Road had been downgraded from 15 tons to 5 tons, effective uh, yesterday, the day before they contacted us. And so, um, but they uh, came on the tail end of that and also told us that they were expediting repairs as quickly as possible and that um, they were very cautiously optimistic at that point they would have it completed before school began. Um, we found out just before the meeting began today that Rocky Ford Road is closed because they are repairing the bridge, and so... Um, so it's closed completely, Ms. It, well, yes, sir, because you can't get, you can get to the bridge, okay. and then you'd have to turn around and come back. Okay. And that's essentially what our buses would have to do if they don't get it prepared in time, is that we'll talk about that in a sec. But, okay. um, so right now, yes, Rocky Ford Road is, is closed at the bridge. Um, which means they're repairing it, hopefully which means it'll be done by Tuesday. It, right, right. right. it'll have to be repaired by Tuesday. Um, <laughs> And so I'm, I'm um, very hopeful. Um, and, you have, and you have a plan. If, if it's not open, you yeah, have a plan. We have a plan in the event that that, that does not happen. We, uh, it's a natural split spot, and they will work with us on some turnarounds, and we will, we will get the children to school. Um, we'll split some routes and add some drivers, and we've got a back up plan in case they don't. Um, we'll, we'll notify those households that are impacted um, of the plan in the event. Okay. Um, I think we've covered everything else that was on the very last slide, Mr. Holmes, a little more. Um, just some of the things that we've done um, as we go through the rides. All right, so, and I note the last sentence, you've got six drivers in training, should be completed mid-September. So it's from a staffing perspective. You have the drivers that you need. We have all our routes staffed, yes, sir. We have a sub pool that is, I would say, five solid subs deep, but with lots of other sometimes available subs that will help us with reference to fall field trips and things of that nature. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good. Okay. Um, so since this is a public meeting, are you still accepting applications? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, they, we parked out a few minutes. We parked
parked the bus in front of the Walmart uh, the week before you know, that tax-free sale day, okay. and uh, we had a number of candidates that applied as a result of parking it there. So Mr. Jones and I have talked about parking at some other places at training. I asked the drivers if they park if they park their bus somewhere during the day that's a public spot. We have one driver that works part time at one of our food stores in the county. I said, um, please let me know, and we'll talk to your where whoever owns that, and we'll see if we can hang that sign up. Yes, you tell us you need a couple banners. Is that right? Well, we've got banners, so yeah. if you'd like to get more, we can. Dr. Jones, can bring us out. Sounds good. All right. Any other questions for Ms. Walton? Yes, ma'am. And what about the uh, special needs drivers? Are we set with those? And yes, they have their we are set with special needs drivers. We uh, completed the special needs routing uh, Friday, and then the special needs drivers and I met yesterday afternoon. And so um, the expectation is those drivers are reaching out to those families and parents this week to introduce themselves and let them know what times they'll be there. Thank you. All right. Any other questions from the board for Ms. Walton? Ms. Walton and Mr. Johns, Dr. Jones, any last comments? All right. Next item, Dr. Jones. Yes, uh, next item is an update um, on accreditation. Um, the state has released preliminary accreditation um, ratings. Uh, the official ones don't come out till the end of September, but we, since uh, it was publicly released, we wanted to make sure we gave the board a, an update on where we stand. Uh, and this will be a brief update. We'll follow up with more um, detail um, at the end of September when we get the official results back because they're still changing as they're looking at data and that type of thing. Um, I can report that um, <coughs> all of our schools are fully accredited uh, yet again uh, based on the initial accreditation ratings released in July. Um, all our schools look good in terms of where they are. Um, the board will remember from previous presentations that we do have new accreditation standards um, and uh, these are based on school quality indicators. You have not only um, student achievement, which is um, in the four core content areas and overall pass rate, which we've done in the past, but we also now have um, measures of achievement gaps in English and math. Uh, between um, several reporting categories, including our African American students, economically disadvantaged students, um, Hispanic students, um, and special needs students are four of the main ones that we have. So uh, the state is looking at the gaps between those report reporting categories, if they exist, and our um, white students. So that's a new um, wrinkle that we have um, experienced for the first time this year and we're collecting that data and looking at it. There's also student engagement data that includes the graduation and completion index that we've already had and dropout rate but it also includes um, chronic absenteeism as well as a college and career um, civic re readiness which the state's still working out the details on, on that classification um, and measure but those are um, instead of just the four overall ratings, we now have uh, ten uh, ratings that we are paying attention to in terms of our accreditation. Just some um, areas of focus and student successes. Um, we have um, our areas of focus is that achievement gap, um, and that's um, similar to most districts around the state. Um, particularly for us students with disabilities, economically disadvantaged, and black students. Uh, so we're keeping an eye on that. The good news is that's been a focus of ours for the last three or four years, even when it didn't count towards accreditation. Um, and we've made some good strides in that area. We still have some work to do um, to close those gaps, but that's certainly a focus and a goal for all of our schools. Um, we have had attendance approved. The new attendance policy that uh, Katie Wojcicki and a committee worked on um, has um, borne some good results. Uh, we've got a 20 to 75 percent increase in attendance and in terms of that chronic absenteeism rate over the previous year. So that's been a, a huge increase and a continued focus on communication with parents and the importance of kids being at school. And then I've listed for each of the schools there some um, successes that they've had. Flat Rock closing um, in every group in English and math. Um, Can I ask you a question? Sure. You don't mind. How many students in our system would, do you consider to be chronic absent, suffer from chronic absenteeism? How large is that issue? So, 
Fewer than 15%. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I would have to get that information to you, but it, it varies as the kids get older, it actually increases. So it's a portion of more at the high school. It is, um, and then we also had had a great partnership with our parents, though, at the elementary schools in particular, like understanding the impact, okay. and really the school counselors, the administrators in particular, worked with the, the parents to just get them to understand that just because a child has a B in the grade book, that doesn't mean they've learned everything that goes along with that B because they may have been excused from activities that just don't translate well to make up work. And um, I think that's been a great communication tool because sometimes parents see that the child's still doing okay and they're thinking, well, you know, let's keep them home an extra day or something like that. So, or family trips, you know, things that we're not discouraging if that's something that's important to your family. We just want to have a plan to get them back on track when they get back. When it caps the TSM is defined as? 10% of the school year. So at, when they hit 18 days. Okay, that, that's, an, that's a wonderful number. I just wanted to understand the breadth of the problem a little bit more. So thank you very much. Sure, thank you. Um, at Pocahontas Elementary, um, had a five-point gain in English overall with gains for our students with disabilities, our economically disadvantaged black students. We've also closed the gap in math for our students with disabilities and black students. Um, Powhatan has closed gaps in math um, for th all three of those groups. Uh, Powhatan Middle School, which Last year, of course, was rated as Pocahontas Middle School and Powhatan Junior High because technically it was running as two different schools from a funding perspective. Close the gap in English for our economically disadvantaged students and in math for our Hispanic and black students. That's a measure as well for Hispanic, not one that we see we have a large population of, so it doesn't um, count very often. And then Powhatan High School has closed gaps as well. Biggest news at the high school is the dropout uh, rate, which has gone down significantly, a 51% drop, or uh, almost cut it in half from about over 3.5% to under 2%. So fantastic. fantastic news there, and good job by the high school staff um, collectively on that. Um, Next steps um, that we have, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, we have the official release of ratings in September. Um, there's still information coming from the state. This is a new accreditation standard for the state. There's been a lot of turnover at the state with a new uh, state superintendent. So we're getting new information that's come up, which is why we are presenting you with a lot of detail information. Um, the big question is how small groups are um, defined. Uh, if the board remembers back to the days of AYP, it was if you had a group less than 50 students, it didn't count. Um, the number that was reported to us originally was 30 students uh, for the new accreditation standards. The state has now come back and said it is 30 students, but if you have less than 30 students, we're going to count those as a three-year average. So if you have 10 students, say we have 10 Hispanic students at Flat Rock, those 10 students wouldn't count in one year, but their performance is then averaged over three years and becomes a, a, a rating that would count in terms of performance. Um, the state has gotten a lot of feedback from this superintendent as well as many other superintendents that um, that uh, can be hurtful to the child because of the, the reason we protect small numbers is those students are easily identifiable. And if 10 students are um, making the difference between uh, a school being accredited or um, accredited with conditions or that information is publicly reported. Um, I feel, as a superintendent, that that can be harmful to the child and the family um, and it doesn't protect them, which is the whole purpose of small groups. There have been lots of superintendents in, um, uh, throughout the state that, that have shared that information. So the state has gone back, uh, said they're going to take a look at that and see uh, I think it's a balance between we want to make sure that no student is left behind and that we're, um, every student's um, performance is important, but we also want to be fair to the student and to the school. Uh, when you only have 10 students, uh, the performance of one or two students can make or break a school in, in terms of their accreditation ratings, and uh, is that truly fair to the school and to the community? Um, the state's also hired a math special education specialist, which I think is important. Um, we have spent time at each of the schools reviewing results, not just at the administrative level, but with the teachers and the staff. Um, uh, each of the principals brought in a good number of their staff over the summer, uh, compensated the teachers for that time, and, and looked at their data and looked at their performance and have begun um, 
creating their school improvement plan. Um, a big part of what we do is VTSS, and so we've been updating that and looking at uh, some feedback we've gotten from some research that was done by some students from BCU and their um, doctoral programs, and really trying to make sure we hone in on exactly um, how we can get better and, and building that into our school improvement plans. And that's the information that we have to share at that time. I'm happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Uh, and again, we'll bring this back to you. I think it's September 27th is when the state is talking about releasing it, so we'll probably bring you back more detailed information in one of the October board meetings. All right, questions or comments for Dr. Jones? Mr. Chairman, Mr. Cole. One thing is this profile of graduate still concerns me a great deal. I mean, slide six mm -hmm. gives you the, the mountaintop version of what it's supposed to be, but, there, but until the state comes up with a list of criteria for what each one of these things are, we're, we're kind of operating in the dark. And, and uh, uh, it bothers me that we're being held accountable for something that we haven't defined yet. So but that's, just, that's a comment, but just a general comment. And I, and I know that you're relaying that information to the city <coughs> also. But it's, it's, it's frustrating to me as a citizen, as a board member, we're going to be held you know, we're going to one of this profile of a graduate. Nobody knows what that profile of a graduate is at this point. And, and, and it's going to be interesting to see what kind of criteria they come up with to say that somebody's attained and demonstrated productive workplace skills, qualities, and behaviors. Uh, you know, which workplace skills? Which behaviors? Uh, which qualities? Uh, so anyway, the other thing that I think we could do to improve on this is to put a little box down at the bottom that, that defines all these abbreviations we've got in here. Uh, you know, I kind of know what they are, but sure. I can imagine that a parent will, you know, What's ED and what's W, which SWED and what's D, VTSS? Uh, you know, we're famous in education for throwing those things around. Uh, so I think that would, that would help us improve and communicate that to the public. But I, I'm appreciative of, of, of where we are, and you know, you know we, uh, I've had every confidence because you know we've met the achievement by and large. And the groups are always going to be a concern because they change from year to year, and one or two students can make a huge difference. But, you know. I mean, um, and I'm confident we'll get to the other things too on the school quality indicators uh, once we understand what they are. Okay. All right. Dr. Jones? I, just, I think Mr. Cole brings up a good point. I think it's 2020 is when the state is scheduled to come out with the, um, the uh, career readiness index. So uh, it is kind of shooting in the dark. But uh, you know, I think Powhatan does a great job of getting our kids ready. and. Uh, we'll continue to move forward on that, and as we get more information, we'll be able to refine it some. Um, but it, it is a concern, and uh, I know it's rolling out a big new system, but there are a lot of unanswered questions that we have that we're uh, slowly getting answers to from the state. Okay. Other questions or comments? All right. Here we go. Dr. Jones? Yep. Thank you, sir. Uh, next item is... Um, Update on summer programs. I uh, want to give you a quick overview of uh, now that we're heading into the school year, um, some of the summer school and summer camp programs. So Dr. Thomas is here <laughs> to, um, to give us this update. Yes, thank you. I apologize for being delayed. Sorry. Right. Welcome, Dr. Thomas. <laughs> um, I'm very excited to share with you uh, the wonderful opportunities that we offer the young people in Powhatan to kind of bridge the end of the school year and build enrichment and growth all through the year. So the first, we'll share the numbers. Uh, you may remember last year we doubled the kindergarten readiness group, so we were able to serve more students. Uh, we increased our camp numbers, and ultimately we're able to, uh, to serve 936 students this summer. And of course, it continues to be a goal to grow every year, and we gather feedback to continue to provide opportunities that young people and parents find of value. The programs uh, that we offered, the camps, thank you. Uh, we had several enrichment camps, some you will remember from last year, and others uh, will be new. We had fun with science, the Harry Potter was a huge success, in the kitchen, nature, quilting, uh, tech divas, which is always a hit. Uh, but we offer lots of enrichment op opportunities. Then with elementary, we have the kindergarten readiness that I just spoke about, which is sort of like a K-booster program. 
uh, to get our students uh, that we've screened during the early spring and summer to give them kind of a leg up for the fall. And then we have a regular summer school, which is a themed uh, remediation program, and we'll cover the theme in a later slide. Secondary, credit recovery, advancement, project graduation, um, I mean project, uh, yes, project graduation, and of course all the athletic uh, camps that are available that we have offered in the past were a gain off of this year. Uh, in the elementary academics, this year our theme was, the, uh, the title was the Imagination Institute, and it took a fine arts slant on our STEM program. Uh, we offer reading, uh, which we use the same tools that are used for remediation during the school year. The math specialists and coaches created 15 designed lessons with all the manipulatives available to them. The feedback from teachers has been very positive. And then the STEM component, which was added just a couple years ago, kind of interconnects the reading and the math in a re really meaningful way. And we suggest uh, we uh, just have a different theme each year so students who participate in more than one year will have something completely different. Um, which I've already touched on, the kindergarten readiness being in three years. Uh, we went up to a, a growth range from 2 to 38 points, which was an average growth of 16.75. That's actually a two-point increase over last year. And we are very pleased with that and feel like um, by the board investing and adding that, we are really getting a strong uh, outcome from that investment. Community involvement, and I, I know I'm going to come with an elementary lens in this, but the high school volunteers uh, from the National Honor English Society, the PHS ambassadors, and just general student volunteers, if you came to summer school, you would have seen them involved in the K-1 classes, providing all kinds of support, excellent role models, relationships, beyond just what they provided. Uh, reading takes you everywhere, our summer reading program. Uh, three were held at night. We tried something new this year. We, ha we held two during the school day, and we're in the process of evaluating the success for that. You'll notice we had guest readers, uh, Kim Emel, Todd Voorhees, Gail Timberlake, uh, Jose Reyes, and Ray Shrewberry. These people uh, come and share their love of reading and engage with the community. Uh, we had murals, activities. Uh, Friends of the Library provided uh, craft activities. So I can't say enough about the community involvement, what it shows our students, and the, the benefit we gain from that. Secondary academics, 400 plus students, including 216 online students and 120 project graduation students, took 122 summer SOL tests. And it occurred, of course, at, the, at Pocahontas Middle. Um, this included, as I mentioned earlier, project graduation, online courses, including economics and personal finance, health and PE, and a variety of other core academic subjects. The credit recovery courses, uh, courses correspond with SOL tests, English and Algebra One credit recovery, the Algebra One boot camp, and then the Middle School SOL Academy. You will see the pictures, the old Brad song, a picture speaks a thousand words, and here you will see students engaged. Uh, we have the Hogwarts camp, the In the Kitchen, and the Tech Divas. The volleyball camp, and then our lacrosse camp for summer athletics. And then reading can take you everywhere. And these are examples or photographs showing our students engaged with our community partnership. And again, these opportunities would not be possible without the support of our staff. And really, every content specialist, the summer school coordinators, principals, and uh, school counselors, everybody comes together to get the right people in the right place and have the resources that are needed to make this a meaningful experience, whether it's enrichment or growth. We're also lucky, you'll see we had summer uh, interns, summer school inter interns, and I will tell you, the summer school coordinators cannot say enough about the support that they bring. And they're also helping us pull information together to analyze patterns so that we can even be better than we were this year, next year. 
And that was their summer school update. Did you all have any questions? Questions for Dr. Thomas? I want to get young and grow up again. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing the opportunities that, that the students have. Yeah, I heard a lot of positive feedback from parents. It was very well, I thought very well enjoyed. I heard a lot of the um, kindergarten teachers were very pleased that we're doing the readiness uh, program that you mentioned was successful. All right, other questions or comments? Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, takes us to the superintendent's report. Dr. Jones, I know the first item is mine. Do you have any comments before I talk about item A? No, go right ahead. All right, well, thank you. This is a carryover item from our meeting, our last meeting. And I apologize for missing the workshop portion of the meeting uh, where this was an agenda item. Uh, what this was, that was our first meeting after the summer, and it was an effort on my part to sort of go back and capture some things that I thought um, maybe were still outstanding or things that we talked about in the past few years that in some fashion we ought to discuss and decide if we want to make it a part of what we do. Uh, and let me begin, uh, we had not signed the Code of Conduct, the BSBA Code of Conduct for school board members. I believe that the board discussed that that day and, and perhaps we're even prepared to sign the document. I won't, I know that we did not, but if, if the board would like to do that, I do have that with me tonight and we could sign that document and make that a part of our annual efforts. So I see some head nodding. If we want to do that, I'll pass that down to Mr. Punko, and we can get that uh, get that taken care of. So this this is a discussion, and I have a couple items that I wanted to talk about. At, at least since I've been on the board, there are some things that we have been doing, and we seem to seem to enjoy doing it on an annual basis, or feel valuable to do on an annual basis. And it seems like these may be items that would be useful for the board to continue as practices. Um, the first is we, at least for the past two years, we have extended an invitation to both Delegate Ware and Senator Sturdivant to meet with our board sometime in the fall. And if that is something that the board would like to continue to do, I think that that is something we could ask Dr. Jones to schedule for us on an annual basis in January. And that might be easier for them as their calendars fill up. So if that's something the board would like to do, we can make that uh, one of the things that we ask Dr. Jones to do for us as he schedules our meetings for us. And that this is intended for discussion. If anybody feels differently or uh, that's not something you would entertain, please please take this opportunity to express that. Yeah, I think it's something that all of us have said yes to. We've had some specific things you want to talk about. And then we sent a letter here we did, last sir. month. So yes, I'd like to see us do that. All right, so to be more specific, what I'd like to ask him to do is, as he's doing our schedule in January, pick the either the first or the third Set first or third meeting in first or second meeting in September, be the first or third week of the month, and extend to whoever the setting senator and delegate are representing Powhatan County in the Virginia General Assembly and ask them to meet with us. So is that something you can begin to do for us next year? All right, and, and I am working on doing the meeting for us in September. All right, so that's one of the items that I have. Um, the next item I had is we did do a, um, a little bit longer workshop at our last meeting, and the purpose of that was to talk a little bit more in detail about the budget and about the policy of the board. I have had individual board members express to me a desire to be able to spend a little bit more time at some point during the course of the year talking about the budget, the budget development, and, and the details of things like compensation and other things. But in order to do that, we would have to agree that we do want to, at least a meeting dedicated to that purpose or something of that kind. So, I extend that as a discussion item. Well, I appreciated having the uh, discussion at the last meeting about the budget and um, uh, the breakdown, um, everything that was done, and I thought that was a, uh, a good way to we were um, show which ways we could contribute and. Uh, when things were done so that we would know ahead of time because I think that was the uh, problem is we were after the fact it was always rather than being during the process. Okay. And to frame that a little bit I would say that some of this is, is certainly being driven by the General Assembly so there's only so much that Dr. Jones and Mr. Johns can present to us earlier in the year but I think from a policy perspective it may be something that we want to talk about and my only intention is 
that if these are things we want to do, we can schedule them in January. That way we know well before any of the dates that it's something we want to accomplish. So do we want to continue with our regular practice or ask that Dr. Jones identify a longer meeting or a different kind of meeting from one of our one of our nights in the fall, perhaps, where we do this? Is that something the board would like to do? Mm -hmm. This fellow is going to be um, we'll do a whole thing on compensation in the fall already. So okay. it's, it's going to be in addition to that. I mean, we do we, we do the salary study, and, uh, you know, so that's already a part of their process. I mean, if you, if you want to basically say that's going to be this month, you know, then I, I'm fine with that. And, you know, you know, last year we, we took the compensation in general, and I don't know that we need to look at that every year, but. You know, the, you know, maybe say there's going to be a meeting and you have some rotated topics that you got I mean, because we just did you know, have a budget put together last time. Do we, do we want to do that every year or do we want, you know, I, you know, I, just, I, I want it to be worthwhile. I don't, I don't want necessarily, you know, it's good to be reminded, but I, at the same time, I want more people. I mean, we covered that, you know, last year pretty extensively do we want to do it again. So, you know, I think it's a good idea, Mr. Chairman. I think it might be in our best interest to come up with a, a, a list of three or four topics that would rotate through during the court, you know, over a couple of years. But that's, that's, that's my take on it, but I think it is a good idea. Right, and I extend it only for the discussion sake. It does seem to be something that we've talked about, that desire to have some more time dedicated to that purpose. But if, if you're satisfied with it, you know, the way it is, or we want to talk about it some more, I'm okay with that. I just thought I would now seems to me to be the right time to have the discussion before we enter into, or Dr. Jones and his staff enter into the process. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Chairman yeah, I, I think it's a worthwhile discussion to have, uh, just looking at the schedule that we already have set forward. My preference would be to piggyback that onto an existing meeting, you know, that being starting early. Okay. Uh, you know, I, I, it, it's more difficult for me to try to accommodate a new date and to work with the ones we already have. Understood. Just myself. Well, there seems to be a few people that are indicating that they would like to do that. So maybe we can go ahead and find a date later this year designated for that purpose. Mm -hmm. The board can give you some, uh, perhaps some thoughts on what we'd like to talk about mm -hmm. at that meeting or what we'd like to uh, hear a little bit about as far as what's being developed and what you're considering. And then we can talk about doing that on an ongoing basis. Ms. Ayers, what, um, Mr. Johns had already said that sometime in the fall you would uh, review the like the ten year salary scale that we had talked about mm -hmm. earlier, you know, when we were doing the salary discussion during budget. Um, and that might be something interesting just to review because I know Kim had received something, um, you know, with the ten year average being anyway, you talked about a ten year salary scale. Yeah, I and would we would review that. Yes, ma'am, I would agree with that. That's that seems to be something that generates a lot of interest people that call me to talk about it. They talk about the scale, the structure, the changes, that kind of thing. So I think that would be a very good topic. Okay. More evenly balanced. All right. All right, next item I had is of the same vein. Uh, at least for the past two years, we've been attempting to have quarterly meetings with board supervisors. To me, the, the relationship between the two boards is critical. And uh, I, would, I would like to see us maybe formalize that in the same fashion we talked about with the board, with uh, the delegate and senator in that in January we could ask Dr. Jones to at least extend that invitation to the Board of Supervisors and set the meetings a little earlier in the year. That may work better for them. They too have a very busy calendar, even busier than ours, I know. And if they could plan it a year ahead of time, that might make it easier for them. And uh, the board is aware that uh, Dr. Jones and I met with uh, Mr. Tucker and their chair and their uh, county administrator. We did at least schedule that first meeting. We're working to schedule the additional meetings for this year. But I just really think if that's something that we place value in, we should extend the invitation on a new basis. So that's again a discussion topic. Is that something the board would like to ask Dr. Jones to do on an ongoing basis? I would. Okay, see you get on. All right. All right. Uh, next item I had was we have talked. Um, talked about the student liaison. I think that uh, we've been at two years now with student liaison. I'm sure at this point a, a new student liaison mm -hmm. has been identified. Yeah. 
Um, we talked about the role of that individual. I know that role has probably grown or changed a little bit, but is the board kind of satisfied with the duties that have been identified for that person, that young young man? I have a request. I had a request. Um, I talk, talked to Dr. Jones about it, but I don't know if you've had a chance to check about the, the cords. There was a request to see if a, a cord could be given. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mentioned that. That was right before um, graduation. So that's on the list for the graduation committee at the high school to discuss this year. Oh, okay. So um, well, you had mentioned that you weren't sure if it had to be something academic. I guess you mean in a class or? Yeah, there's different different categories, but they're investigating it to see whether it's a cord or some other um, mention of, of that relationship um, and recognition, I think, can definitely be done. Has something been provided to that, or will something be provided in writing to that individual? This is kind of what you're, what the expected expectation Yeah, um, actually, um, Ms. Wilson sent out a, a congratulations email over the summer saying kind of what the, when the meetings were, kind of what the responsibilities are, and then I usually meet with the liaison when they get back to school um, before the first meeting and kind of walk, um, in this case it's going to be a her, um, through the process and give them a brief. And then we've also added in an opportunity where Dr. Massa meets with the liaison before each um, public meeting, the monthly meeting, the first monthly meeting, uh, so they can talk through what are some things that you want to bring up and here are some things that are going on, that kind of thing. So, so we do have some communication uh, strategies in there to make sure that time's valuable for them and for the board. All right, any other questions or comments about that? All right, that answered my question. I appreciate you having that. All right, those are the items that I had. I, I just wanted to try to clarify a few things, I suppose, and try to memorialize them. Uh, the last the last one I'll just offer is fairly simple. I think the entire time I've been on the board, we have consolidated comments and next steps and that sort of thing. But we'd like to just clean the agenda up a little bit and just have one item on there. Okay. So we'll just remove the comments and be done with it. Okay. All right. That's a little housekeeping, housekeeping, I suppose. All right. Well, thank you for your indulgence, members of the board. I appreciate that. I just thought it might be worth uh, mm -hmm. worth a few minutes to do that. Mm -hmm. So, Superintendent's report, Dr. Jones. Yes. Uh, we have a first batch of um, school board policies for approval. This is um, these are BSBA school board policy updates. Uh, these were presented to the board at the August seventh meeting uh, and uh, were updated in May by the BSBA, and we're looking for approval of these. We're happy to answer any questions that you may have of uh, these um, updated policies. All right, is there a discussion regarding these uh, 10 or so revised policies? I had a couple. Um, I see one. I was wondering um, what the high school um, PE is. Is that is that every day at 30 minutes? Oh, yes. it's, it would be the on even uh, schedule, even. but it would equal up to the 150 minutes. Is that how it works? Is each grade is allowed to or must have to eat? Right, with a goal, but it's only ninth and 10th graders that have that. Um, oh. Our 11th and 12th graders have an option of taking an advanced PE class, but it's not required. Um, so they don't have specifically structured time in 11th and 12th grade. And that's in, a, in accordance with state yeah. code. Okay. Yes. Just thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, IJD, um, the one about the college and career readiness. Um, yeah. I know the middle school does this already, but I thought that was quite young. The elementary with students yeah. begin the development of a portfolio yeah. starting at elementary. Yeah, um, I don't think I knew what I wanted to be when I was in fifth grade, but um, you know, this is a, a mandate from the state, um, and we're working to structure this in a way that's more about career exploration and just getting to know what careers are out there, as opposed to, and then meeting the requirements from the state, but not overburden the stu students with too much information, because seventh grade is an appropriate time to do it, and we do a nice job of, of beginning a plan then. But we'll start introducing in this fifth grade 
uh, for this policy in the state code. Oh, so it only has to be fifth grade, not K through five. Well, we do the exploration K through five, and so by the end of fifth grade, they will have explored all the career clusters mm -hmm. through a activities and lessons and both formal and informal speakers coming in field trips that they go on all of that so the counselors keep track that they've explored them all and then by the end of fifth grade they'll complete a career inventory um, that will then go with them to middle school where they actually start to figure out what that means that makes more sense okay great thank you uh, that's all all right other questions or comments? I have a couple mr chairman go and, um, This new abusive work environments, uh, uh, I know it's a new law, so I'm assuming that it will eventually have regulations attached to it at some point because it you know, talks about it, but just, I don't see any mechanism for reporting, I don't see any mechanism, I don't, I don't see any mechanics to it at all, and I don't know why I can't be rolled into the sexual harassment mechanism, but that's that's just my opinion, so, so I'm assuming that that will come yes. later on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then in, in uh, ICID uh, on page five it talks about reduced, you know, when we're cutting down the school day. It says we may not have more than one day per five weeks. So how do we, is that, are we okay with exam closures when we do that? Uh, I'm just trying to look where it says that. Is that one of the numbered items? Cops of this excuse me, I don't I don't have a way to highlight it, so just the subject. What part were you referring to? Page somewhere on page five it says fourth paragraph from the bottom. Uh, it says uh, it says that we can we can reduce the length of the school day, but it has to it can't be more than one day per per five weeks. I'll go back and see if I can it's, find that. It's, it's towards the end of that yeah. third yeah, paragraph. I see it. I think that um, my recollection, I'll go back and check on this, that exam schedules at the high school are exempt from this because it's a te special testing schedule. Okay, okay. I, just, um, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure yeah. that we weren't, yeah, that we weren't paying the policy that would prevent us from doing what we would want you to do. Confirm that. I will confirm that, yes. Yeah, I'll bring it in. I'm, I know we're in compliance because that's old language, but I will uh, double check and make sure about exam schedules on there. Yep. And on page 11, we're in the same policy this email was just asking about maybe the IJ GDP. Page 11, where it says ABC down there. It says, it talks about getting those school years, and, uh, and we can offer three college level courses for three and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it says, written approval high school principal participation, that, that standard. And then it says the college must accept the student for admission. What is that about? I mean, I, I, you know, I work for J. Sergeant Reynolds. We accept everybody, but we're not going to accept into a class until you pass the placement right. test. So, you know, I'm not sure whose language that is or why it's in there. Uh, I know there was some you know, bill in front of the General Assembly that um, talked about colleges accepting credit 
um, and mandating that they accept credit. So I think that's this policy, but I don't know that that's been worked out with yeah. higher ed council or yeah, uh, yeah. Any community yeah. college yeah. council. I don't think so, communicated that to Women Murray or no, DCU no. or anything like that. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah, I, I'd say we we strike that piece until we until we know. I don't want to put it in policy and then we have somebody come back and say, "What's well, in your school board policy that that you know, that, that the University of Virginia is going to accept this college credit that we took in high school?" Right. Um, and I, I think it's a question that needs to be directed back to DSBA about why they included it in there if, if it hadn't been deep and worked out. Right. So. Well, it, it, it's a little strange that we would have a policy that mandates another organization do something. Yeah. Um, yeah. But again, I think it's yeah. because of that law. Yeah, I, do, I know the state has had that ongoing right. conversation, but, and, and I know it is an ongoing conversation, but, but things I was unaware from either the school board side or from the community college yes, side, that that, part had, that that part had been earned out because uh, that would make life a lot easier in a lot of ways. But it's, it's, it's All right, so we have some uncertainty about the IJB uh, the current language. I just just that IDB, we, just the IDB. So what, well, yeah, I'll yeah, probably go on the yeah. second page. Yeah. Why don't we um, let's why don't we table that one? Well, let's not table it. We don't want to table it. Let's, okay. let's what I would suggest is we pull out the ones that we want you to ask you right, to right, follow right. up on, yeah. and if, if there's if, if there's a motion to approve the remaining policies, we could do that and to bring us back additional information on the, the two the, the two sets I have here that you the right. the questions come right. There were only there, there were my only comments, Mr. Chairman. And once again, I, I'm not an expert, but there were just two things just it, it stuck out with me when I was reading. Well, sounded like we did have questions. Thank you. All right, any other questions or comments? So by by my my notes, and please correct me if I'm wrong, the two policies that we had some additional questions about were IJB and IC slash ID right. and I think if the board uh, is uh, if there's a motion regarding the other two our motion would be to uh, approve the bills or the rather the uh, policy that's presented with the exception of IC ID and IJB. Yes, Mr. So Ms. Ayers has made a motion. Is there a second to that motion? And we would be approving these policies under this item with the exception of ICID and IJD. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of approving those policies, please respond. Aye. 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 Is there any opposed? The motion carries 5 0. So we look forward to that additional yep. information. I'll bring it back to you. Thank you. Uh, next item is consider approval. These are some additional policies. Uh, these are policies that staff have reviewed um, that we needed to make some additions to. Uh, the first three policies are adding our new Director of Human Resources, Dr. Parker, into the policy as the compliance officer um, and changing that from when Ms. Horn was there. Uh, we've also added our new mission statement um, and um, vision statement to a couple policies where it's required or one of those and then deleted the other one and then we have a um, teacher removal of a student from class um, we removed the student removal form from the policy because the form is no longer used so that was just updating some policies based on current practice as well as current contacts questions about that one I just there is a difference in protected classes between GB and GBA, JH, JF, HA. Okay. It may be intentional and it may be by code. I don't know, but uh, you know, if you look at GB, the first policy, it's mm -hmm. got the one that's missing is gender identity. Gender identity is in GB, but it's not in GBA, JF, HA. So, uh, not that you're in session. It's just something that we need to be aware of. I don't, you know, like I say, maybe because the state code has it that way. I know that there was one point state code did not have gender identity as, as a protected class. So. Mr. Cole, we also dealt with that at Maggie Walker, and we just we made the match. In, because obviously you don't want two similar policies that, that have different criteria. So we at Maggie Walker we just 
we made the match. I actually think that the current policy we had also was different in, in the things that they The only thing that I would say is uh, this was an uh, update. That part of it was an update from the state, and I would uh, assume, and we can go back and check it, it's because of actual legal protection. I'm thinking to do this. But, right. But, yeah. I think in terms of Equal Employment Act, um, it may not be protected or, or vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, I think it's state code, too, but I just want right. to be aware of it. That is different between the two of them at this point. Yeah. All right. So this this is an item. I think that if we could ask you to research some additional information, but we probably need to clean up the rest of this in order to get it available for the employees to miss the appropriate individuals to notify. Right. So this might be one that we would want to act upon. This particular one, act upon, and then ask you to take a look at that for us instead of so the expedition. So that's kind of agreeable with the rest of the board. The, the comment, the comment, I would, well, the question I have or the comment is. This perhaps this is just a, a preference, but is is there a is there a need to list specific people in this policy to comment? For example, if you, if you listed the position and not the people, we would have to do this every time we have a turnover in position. We could do that. Um, I think we, our intent, and I think it goes back a long way, is just to provide clarity to employees if they're looking at the policy exactly who and give them their email address so they may not be able to. Look. Up, I don't know, but um, and, and I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I guess the inquiry it would make sense in terms from us from a changing the policy. Um, if somebody Everybody changes the job, we do the same thing. Captain Max, we want to change your last name, so I don't know if it's going to be maybe a preparation. It's out there somewhere. I, I, I have no problem with that. I'm just thinking that way you don't have to right uh, change this, so but the benefit is perhaps just. Attention. Right. Uh, no, I can't leave. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, that's that's all that. I have. So for that particular one. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Chairman, I make a motion to approve these revised policies. Okay. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. All in favor of approving uh, these three, six, eight policies? Please respond by. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion carries 5 0. Miss Evil, have a good evening. Good Please. luck with your son. Yes. Yes, it's a big evening. Have a good time. Yes. Please um, let the records reflect that I'm going to the Powhatan High School B night. <laughs> this is a big evening. All right, Dr. Jones. <coughs> sure. Next item is to consider approval for religious exemption. Uh, we have students RE 181906, 07, 08, 09, and 010. Uh, that we've received requests for release from compulsory attendance. I ask the board to go ahead and approve those per uh, code 22.1-254. All right, is there a motion regarding these four students? Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion to uh, approve uh, religious exemptions 06 through 010 per the code. All right, we have a motion to approve these four students from compulsory attendance. Do we have a second? Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor, please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4 over and 1 for the evening. All right. Next item, Dr. Jones. Yes. Uh, next item is to consider acceptance of donations. We have two donations. One, a uh, very generous donation of $750 from Mr. Larry Nordvig, uh, which was uh, designated the School Division to Support Education of Powhatan County. Uh, and then we have a monetary donation of $195 from the Wells Fargo Community Support Campaign from a parent uh, directed directly to Pocahontas Elementary School. All right, any discussion regarding these two items? Motion. Motion to approve. Second. Right. have a motion and second. All in favor, please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 401. Thank you, Mr. Goldberg. The President, just see you. Buy a bus with it for the Western end of the county. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think 750 would go that far. We need a couple more zeros. Thank you, Larry. Come back and see me at Buddy. Ms. Walton is making those. <laughs> All right. Next item we have is closed session. So, uh, Mr. Tucker, would you mind reading the certification for us, sir, and making a motion? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion we come out of closed session. Okay, motion is there a second? Second. All right, motion is second. All in favor of coming out of closed session, please respond with aye. Aye. Whereas, Whereas, I'm sorry, motion carries 4 0. Go ahead, Mr. Cummings. Whereas Powhatan County School Board has convened a closed meeting on this date pursuant to an affirmative recorded vote in accordance with the provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act, whereas Section 2.2371GD of the Code of Virginia requires a certification by the school board that such closed meeting is conducted in conformity with the law, and therefore be resolved that the Powhatan School Board hereby certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge only public business matters lawfully exempt from open meeting requirements. By which we've all discussed, the closed meeting person certification applies. Only public business matters, as we identified in the motion to meeting, the closed meeting be heard, discussed, or considered. Aye. 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 Uh, all right. That takes us to the action item, and this is a considering approval personnel document demo. Is there a motion? So moved. A motion and a second. I'm sorry, we do have a second. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor of approving the personnel document and addendum, please respond with aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 4-0-1. Takes us next steps to follow up and board comments. Mr. Country, can we start with you this evening, sir? You may. I have no next steps to follow up or comments other than uh, ready to start the year. All right. Ms. Ayers? Um, the free webinar about the school bus safety, mm -hmm. are those able to be recorded? Or mm -hmm. oh, they are? I think they record them and Okay. You can access them later, but I'll double check. Okay, yeah, that'd be, I would, BSBA. Sure, yep. yeah, and it's a free one, so yep. I think that, um, yeah, if that's... If you want that, me to check and make sure? Yeah, Okay. because I can't do it on that day, um, but I wouldn't mind listening to that and make, you know, it recommended that uh, the bus, some of the bus yeah. teams do the yep. same, so um, that would be fine. And uh, board comments just to, you know, not that there's anybody here, but <laughs> welcome back to our staff and Jason. Oh, I didn't mean nobody. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I know no, you all. Welcome all. back, Jason. Nobody I was did, no, Jason I didn't mean that either. Summer. I didn't mean that either. I'm so sorry. Welcome no all of you back. But I, you know, <laughs> you get the point. So no, you're, and you're still wonderful. Watching Thank you. Time. And you're wonderful. And you're wonderful. But welcome back to everyone. And, um, hope everyone has a good start to the school year. All right. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Mr. Colton. Ditto to what they said. I hope it's a smooth opening next year, next week and uh, look forward to good things this school year. All right, thank you. And, and I'll just follow that. I'll say that I appreciate the board's indulgence on item 4A. There were a couple fairly minor kinds of things, but I think it's always important for to look for ways to improve yourselves. And I think that those are important items. So I thought I was looking forward for some discussion. Welcome back to the staff. It's an exciting school year. We've got some exciting things happening in our county and in our school system. Bless you. And uh, just uh, appreciate and enjoy the opportunity to be a part of that. So thank you for that. And Dr. Jones, the uh, floor is yours, sir. Uh, no comments. I look forward to going over to the high school and yeah, making sure we document good. well. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. That takes us to item eight. Is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Motion is second. All in favor, please respond with aye. 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 Motion carries 4-0. Have, have a wonderful evening.